Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Scott Anderson with Agribest Feeds, and I'm very excited to join you here this evening and uh, spend some time introducing our feed programs to you uh, with a webinar we've called uh, Sweet Pro and Redmond 101. So I uh, just want to jump right into it. One of the things that Agribest Feeds uh, is all about is we want to come around and support and encourage and enhance the lives of our, of our rancher friends and producers, uh, whether we're working with horses or cattle or sheep, goats, whatever, um, come alongside and support them nutritionally in their enterprise. As we look at ranchers' goals, basically uh, a lot of uh, ranchers Goals fall into three different major areas. Uh, the first is, come up, uh, is uh, herd health and performance. How can we get the most out of those animals, the uh, best benefit from them and for them? And some of those things that we look at is animal uh, health, uh, genetic potential, reproduction, longevity, uh, average daily gain, Weaning weights, how can we support their calving process, uh, calving ease, cleaning up, calves up vigorous right away. All of those things are part of, of what ranchers are thinking about as they think about their herd. Also, they think about the resources. What do they have that's available uh, to support that herd? And one of the biggest areas of resource is uh, the forage that they have or the grass, uh, grass that they raise, the hay that they put up and looking at how can we get the most out of that true feed efficiency. And then of course, bottom line with any enterprise uh, is how can we be profitable with this and, and maximize our, our profits. So as we look at this, I uh, wanna kind of concentrate on a couple of different things as we go through the evening. Um, one is, is what's the harvester and what's the crop? And as we look at it, our, our herd, the cattle herd is the harvester, um, and the crop is the forage that's out there. A cow has the ability to take that crop and convert it into high quality protein, meat and milk, which produces the, um, uh, the, the profit for the rancher off of ground that can't be farmed most of the time. And so cattle are excellent at converting uh, complex carbohydrates into high, pro, high, high quality protein. And that's one of the things that our world definitely needs um, uh, in our diets. So one of the things that we're gonna really focus on this evening is how we tune up that harvester to get more out of every bite of forage. And as we look at that harvester, not only do we have the four-legged harvester that we're looking at, but we also have another herd that's out there um, a symbiotic relationship with the microbes that are in, in the room. So the cow produces, or um, horse, or sheep, goat, whatever the animal is that we're talking about that has a rumen or a cecum, uh, provides the right environment, a home for these animals. And it brings in the feedstuff for those animals, uh, the microbes, to be able to break down. In turn, those microbes take that feedstuff and break it down into what the cow needs for all of the different functions that she has, whether that's reproduction, um, kind of an a excellent uh, immune response, um, growth, uh, all of those different things that uh, that cow needs to, to perform. And so these are the things that we're going to be looking at and seeing how we can support these two herds as we go through the evening. So there's basic nutritional needs and actually on both of these uh, herds, both the cattle and the microbes, uh, there's basic nutritional needs that they have as far as protein, energy, uh, minerals, trace minerals, vitamins, and other nutrients. And the majority of their nutritional needs are met from the forages, the grasses, the hay that you have on your uh, on your ranch or are providing for these animals. In this example, I'm just gonna throw this up just for talking point. Uh, each grass or hay has a total digestible nutrient um, quality or quantity. And I'm just throwing this one up at 50 just for, uh, to give 
uh, a number to, to work with here this evening. Now, when those basic nutritional needs of that animal are not being met by that grass or hay, if you're lacking in one of those areas or a number of those areas, what we need to do is supplement that. So we bring in a supplement to basically fill in the gaps where the grass or hay are, are lacking. And what we're gonna be talking about this evening is the Sweet Pro uh, premium feed supplements. Um, in and of themselves, Sweet Pro has additional protein, energy, vitamin trace minerals uh, that come along and support that forage that you have, uh, the resources that you have. And it does something pretty special. We have a digestive aid called probiotin. And what that does is, is it actually helps um, improve the total digestible nutrients of your forage by about 25%. So you get about 25% more digestible nutrients out of every bite uh, of forage that your animal is, is taking. And then we support all of that with an with a excellent salt program. And salt is important for life in, in all aspects. And uh, we recommend the Redmond Natural Trace Mineral Salt. Uh, it provides a complete trace mineral tune-up and it has 60 plus naturally occurring trace minerals with sea mineral salt. And so what what we're going to be visiting about this evening and kind of unpackaging uh, a little bit further is how our program is an excellent supplement, activates the forage that you have, and is an excellent uh, mineral safety net uh, as uh, for your animal. So as we start out, I want to uh, kind of put, a, put together a sweet pro block for you and, and kind of um, uh, tell you what's, what's a little bit different, a different approach that uh, Sweet Pro takes. It's really high tech nutrition in a low tech dispenser, as Bob Thornburg, the creator of Sweet Pro, likes to talk about. And the way we actually got introduced to Sweet Pro was back in 2004 or three or four, somewhere in there. Uh, Bob Thornburg, the creator of Sweet Pro, came and talked to my father in law, um, Irv Heidel, about potentially marketing Sweet Pro in Montana. And basically, he told us. Uh, a couple of things. One is that uh, Sweet Pro, one pound of Sweet Pro replaces about three, three and a half pounds of uh, range cake. And mature cattle average score on a maintenance diet will eat up to 25% less forage and uh, perform better. Now as a rancher, this sounded way too good to be true to my father-in-law. And so he said he couldn't um, market it, but he would be happy took him actually a couple of years to, to say that he would be happy to try it out on his own uh, ranch. And he had a, a herd of, of cattle in the dry lot setting in Eastern Montana, uh, had an excellent supplement program with him and had eight big round feeders. So he knew exactly how long uh, it took his herd to go through the eight feeders and took his supplement out, put the Sweet Pro in. And in six weeks, the hay was lasting 28% longer cattle were, were very content. Um, they just naturally backed off on their forage by that much. And that really got Herb's attention and really got him digging into uh, what makes this uniquely better and, and why is that. And so these are some of the things that we've learned over time. Uh, and part of it comes with the genius of how this is put together. So the Sweet Pro Block, which you can see on the screen there, is a 250 pound lick tub. Uh, the value of a lick tub is very important as far as being able to deliver um, small amounts of nutrients uh, over a long period of time. Keeps all the different nutrients um, kind of consistent throughout the tub. And that licking action actually helps buffer the room. And we'll talk a little bit about that uh, in a bit. Uh, but there's a value to that. And so, um, so the lick tub option is, is an excellent way to supplement animals. Now what we do is we come in with an excellent vitamin mineral trace mineral uh, program. Uh, the minerals, the zinc, copper, and manganese are uh, organically complex or chelated, so very bioavailable. About 50% uh, of them are. And um, there's a lot of excellent mineral programs out in the marketplace. Uh, we feel that this is one of the best, and um, 
are really proud of what that does. Now you need a carrier, and this is where it begins to separate us from everyone else out in the marketplace. We use a carrier of distillers grains, uh, dry distillers grains of solubles and condensed distiller solubles. We put those two things together in the patented way that Sweet Pearl has, and it forms a hard lick block, and it um, stabilizes the distiller strain so it doesn't rot. And uh, so the value of that, most, most supplements are either molasses-based or grain-based or using both of those. So those are starches or sugars, where this is a complex carbohydrate. I just want to go into a little picture here just real quick. It helps me to understand um, this process. Uh, this is the ethanol process. And most ethanol plants like to use corn because of the high starch value. There are, um, there are uh, about two thirds of corn is starch. And so what they do is they take that corn, run it through a hammer mill, liquefy it, add enzymes and yeast, and then they ferment that uh, product. So as that product is, is fermented, that's very similar to what a cow does with their feedstuffs. They take their feedstuffs, run through a hammer mill, liquefy it, put yeast and enzymes, and ferment it in their room. The horses will be similar. Um, they use a, it's their cecum as opposed to the rumen, but very similar as we're talking through this, this evening uh, between the, the cecum and, and the uh, rumen on how that works. Then what happens is they take that once that's fermented and they distill the alcohol off. Um, about half of it ends up being alcohol, half of that uh, of, the, of the starch value ends up being carbon dioxide, and the remaining third of the corn is this dry distillers grains of solubles and condensed distillers solubles. Um, this is the nutritious uh, nutritious part of the corn. And so this is a multifaceted supplement and a huge value with that. Uh, it's been converted from a starch to now it's a complex carbohydrate, has very rumen high degradable, rumen, uh, rumen degradable protein, rumen bypass protein. There's minerals that come along naturally with corn, but there's also um, fat that, that comes there. Actually the fat value of uh, this condensed distiller solubles is about 10 times the fat value of molasses. So there's great value in this uh, carrier. And the big thing is that the uh, distiller strains is actually a threefold um, concentrate. So the corn has been concentrated threefold as far as the protein levels, as far as the uh, other nutrients. And so the corn coming out of an ethanol plant is actually better um, for cattle. The distiller strains are better than the corn that uh, enters the ethanol plant. So it's kind of a win-win uh, situation on that. The next thing that we do that really separates us from everyone, it's kind of our golden nugget, it's our probiotin, our digestive aid. Go back into that same, a similar process of fermentation, but instead of using corn, we're using wheat, oats, barley, and flax. One of the nice things about that is each grain has a different uh, amino acid profile, and your amino acid, acids are your building blocks of protein. And so uh, each different grain has a different amino acid profile, and um, run that same thing through the ham mill, liquefy it, um, <clears throat> add yeast and enzymes, and then ferment it, and that's where we get our probiotin. What happens that's different <clears throat> on our process with this is that instead of using, uh, instead of distilling the alcohol off, we don't do that. We just take this whole probiotin and put it directly into the tub. The value on that is, is huge. You're getting, uh, there's a, a nutritional value to the alcohol that's there as far as some palatability as far as a dense, dense um, uh, energy source. Uh, but the big thing that you're getting is the yeast and enzymes that are used to fer ferment uh, the wheat, oats, barley, and flax. They're not cooked. 
back on the other slide where the corn was and they distilled the alcohol off, those yeast and enzymes were cooked. They're still a valuable food source, but they're no longer viable. They, they're not able to do what they were designed to do because they're cooked. It's kind of like a hard boiled egg versus a, um, a, versus a, a live egg where you're, you can't get a chicken out of a hard boiled egg. So on the, on the um, probiotin though, the, the yeast and enzymes are viable. So as they go back in, and as your animal licks on that sweet pro, equipride, equilix um, tub, what happens on that is those yeast and enzymes go into the system and are able to do their work. There's uh, starch digesting enzymes that are in there. There's uh, forage digesting enzymes, mineral digesting enzymes, the yeast, uh, those are those prebiotic oligosaccharides like moss and fructose oligosaccharide. All of those just come naturally in and are able to do uh, their part to make this uh, fully efficient. So that's kind of the Sweet Pro program. Um, as you've got questions, uh, you, can, you can actually type your questions in. I'll kind of continue on here, and then as soon as we're done with the presentation, uh, we'll, um, Daryl can kind of answer some questions either through chat or on the uh, Q&A, and then we'll uh, open it up here at the end for further questions. But as I was saying, as you can see here, um, there is salt in Sweet Pro, but we've always, from the very beginning, uh, we started marketing Sweet Pro in 2006, Formed the family business in 2007, and we've always said that you should have salt out on the side with sweet pro, because if, if your animals are needing salt and mining it from the, the sweet pro, it ends up being a pretty expensive uh, salt lake. So we've always said that we should have salt on the side. Um, 2009, I believe it was, uh, Herb, my father-in-law, um, was at a trade show and ran into a representative from Redmond Natural Trace Minerals. And Irv gave us, Daryl and myself, a call and said, what do you guys think about um, marketing the Redmond salt? They're looking for a distribution company that will market Redmond, uh, kind of in the territory that we were working at that time. And he was saying, we need a, a salt product. Well, Daryl and I, both our response was, salt is salt is salt, salt's a commodity, and we're not a commodity company, so we're not very interested in, in marketing salt. Um, but as you can see, uh, how much weight we carry in the company, um, we, we began marketing the Redmond salt, and uh, actually the first uh, semi-load that we sold uh, was up into uh, north central Montana for soil application uh, for hay ground. And that kind of got my attention is that either there was something that I was missing or, um, or this guy was totally crazy and we were just gonna sell him salt to sterilize the soil. Uh, what I found out, talked with Redmond, is that there's more to this salt than just sodium chloride and salt. And so um, I've actually been down in the salt mine. Here's a picture um, of the salt mine. <clears throat> And as you can see, um, uh, it's, it's very colorful salt. Uh, this is just pure salt. Uh, basically, my understanding is that there's two different salt mines in the world that have the plethora of minerals that are still intact in them. Uh, the one here in Redmond, Utah, and that we market through, and the other one's over in Pakistan, the Himalayan salt, if you've ever heard of that, uh, would be pretty similar in uh, the chemical um, makeup of it. <clears throat> so our, our Redmond salt comes in uh, either 50 pound black bags or 44 pound blocks. But the cool thing is that there's a natural balance of 60 plus naturally occurring trace minerals in crystalloid form. Now as we look at minerals and mineral bioavailability, um, chelates are very good. Colloidal are, are excellent. And, but crystalloid is the most bioavailable form of mineral that there is, where those crystalloid minerals actually dissolve in liquid and penetrate through plant and animal membranes by themselves. They don't have to be connected with some other um, 
metal or ion uh, to be absorbed. Uh, if you go to uh, um, the hospital or having surgery or whatever, one of the first things that they do is they put you on um, uh, a saline IV solution. Uh, those minerals are in crystalloid form because it connects best with your cells the quickest. Interesting quote here. Um, this is from Dr. Maynard, Maynard Murray. Uh, he wrote a book called Sea Energy Agriculture that I would highly recommend. But this is another uh, key thing as we start looking at, um, well, even for ourselves, human wise, uh, or for our cattle or um, horses. But the quantitative analysis of elements in human blood is essentially the same profile as a quantitative analysis found in ocean water including large amounts of sodium chloride. So I think this is one of those areas where we get such a boost of the synergy of these minerals and the natural balance that, that they're in and, and how closely that's related to blood. I think that's a, a lot of the things that we're seeing for animal health and performance and even for, for human health, the value uh, on the human side, it's, it's uh, called Real Salt is the brand that comes from Redmond. So that's kind of a, a little bit on the Redmond story. Uh, so this is a complete nutritional program. So if someone were to come in and ask, well, what, what do you recommend? Uh, what we're going to recommend is starting out with your forage, what you have. Add Sweet Pro at about a pound per head per day. Um, Add salt, we recommend the Redmond salt, a complete balanced ration, takes care of your protein, energy, minerals, uh, trace minerals, both chelated and uh, colloidal, or crystalloid, excuse me, your vitamins, and that powerful digestive aid, probiotin, that gives you 25% more digestible nutrients from your forage that improve digestion. So I'm going to run kind of quickly through a little bit of uh, Cow physiology here, a look at the rumen, and that rumen is really designed to be a fermenter, as we talked about earlier. And optimum uh, pH for forage fermentation, so most of your stocker cow calf operations, that's what we're really focused on is forage fermentation, is between that six and six and a half. You get down uh, below that, you start into subacute acidosis and further down you uh, fall into a, a acidosis. So as we're talking about, most supplements on the marketplace, whether you're supplementing protein or, or energy, um, comes in the form of grain or molasses, sugars or starches, and sugars and starches pull down on the pH in the rumen. Um, you lose digestive efficiency. There's different digestive bugs that break down sugars and starches and um, forages. So that's what this negative associative effect is. This is a negative effect of starch digestion on fiber digesting bacteria in the rumen. Now, if you get too much um, starch too fast, too much grain too fast, your animals go off feed uh, and you've got some issues. But one of the interesting things is down here in this area is where you end up with most, most infections and pathogens you're, you lose some milk production, you, you fall into some breed back problems, but a lot of those kind of get their hold down here in this area. So if we can keep that pH up, you can basically competitively eliminate a lot of those path pathogens. One of them, you know, as an example, coccidiosis. Cattle have, um, they all have it. It's just, is it a matter, does it have a foothold? Is it the right environment for that to break? If we can keep that pH up, uh, that is very important, and that helps with uh, good gut health. It's all kind of ties together. When we're supplementing with Sweet Pro uh, or Equiprite, a complex carbohydrate, high pH actually pulls up on your pH. There's no negative associative effect. We actually have a positive associative effect because the same bugs um, break down Sweet Pro. It's been pre-digested with the ethanol plant, whatever else needs to be broken down, the same digestive bugs. And so um, 
And, and then one other thing I wanted to show on this slide is that if you are using a concentrate, um, if you're feeding grain, if you've got show steers or um, anything like that that you're that you're kind of pushing along, uh, you can actually use Sweet Pro. <clears throat> And like I say, one pound of this replaces about three, three and a half pounds of grain. So you can use less grain and get similar performance. And um, uh, then you can also help buffer that rumen with the Sweet Pro and, and Redmond actually has an excellent product there of a conditioner that will help buffer that too. If, and we can visit more about that uh, if you have questions about it. So that's kind of a picture of the rumen. I want to take another uh, look at the rumen um, in just a different uh, format here. Looking basically the same rumen here, we've got the forages and grass. These uh, little yellow uh, donut looking like things are just representing forage digesting uh, microbes uh, in the rumen. And then you've got sugar digesting microbes that are different. So they're going to be represented by these red guys. Um, so if we add molasses or grain to the rumen, um, there's different microbes that are needed to digest those so that microbial population is shifted and that's that negative associated effect. There's some digestive, uh, decrease in digestive efficiency. Now when we use Sweet Pro, uh, add that, same digestive microbes are, are needed, add Sweet Pro, the number of, of um, the environment is such and the feed Food that we're feeding uh, them with the prebiotic oligosaccharides are actually feeding those microbes in the rumen, and those numbers are greatly increased. And that's a positive associative effect. We got increased digestive efficiency. And then, as we talked about earlier, when especially when we add the Redmond 60 plus naturally occurring trace minerals, um, the health of those microbes, they need those minerals as well. So we're supporting um, good rumen health, good digestive health, and um, uh, this is kind of how we're doing that. Want to shift gears real quick here um, on the how to feed Sweet Pro. Uh, it's fairly simple. As you can see here, we have what's called a stage of growth products. One from the uh, left side of your screen, the soft uh, calf, uh, calf starter all the way up to the magnum, which is hard. What we're doing is we're targeting about a pound per head per day. And uh, you can visit with your dealer or give us a call on what tub to kind of uh, start out with or what block to kind of start out with uh, in your area. But just in our area, we sell most of the FiberMate 20. And that would be for mature cows on um, uh, fair to good quality hay. Um, uh, winter grazing, that type of thing. And, and then the, if you're getting more than a pound per head per day of, of consumption, you just go to the next harder block to slow that down. Or if you're not getting enough, you can just go down to the next softer block. So now as grass is greening up, there, we don't end up changing these a whole lot, but that's kind of how this works. Um, replacement heifers, bulls are a little bit more um, uh, finicky eaters. So bulls were usually down on the softer, you get the cattle candy or Sweet Pro 16, but you can visit with, with us or your, your dealer um, to help work you through what, what tub will work best in, in your situation. We're looking at, at uh, forage quality, the stage of growth of your animal, size of your animal, um, um, uh, the harshness that's, that's going on around, those types of things go into that decision. One of the questions that we get asked very often is, well, do you have a breeding, breeding block? And our answer is yes. Our feeding program covers breeding. Uh, there's flax in, in all of our tubs, and you're getting that on a consistent basis. There's good energy value. Um, uh, we really support breeding well with any of our products. Uh, how about, a, you know, this time of year, turn out the green grass, we have a high mag tub. Well, yes, we do. All of our products have adequate mag, a high mag, to be able to uh, meet those needs so long as you're using the Sweet Pro uh, at least two to three weeks prior to turning out to green grass. How about a uh, weaning tub? Well, yes, 
you know, basically all of our, our feeding program, all of those things are, are in there. How about a stress tub? We've already talked about that. Uh, the moss comes standard in, in all of our tubs and we, we have good gut health and we're focused on that with all of them. One other thing on how to feed, um, keeping our daily consumption on target, I uh, want to visit with about space feeding just real quickly. Um, first, we want to kind of choose the right tub and using a 250 pound tub, one tub for 25 head of cattle would give you a 10 day supply of supplement. Now, because this is a complex carbohydrate and not a starch or sugar, and we're not shifting the microbes in the rumen, um, you can actually, uh, the way God's created those cattle is that they can take on a protein load and mineral load and utilize that over time. And uh, so what we can do is we can place a sweet pro tub on day one, put our salt out. Once again, we recommend the Redmond Natural Trace Mineral Salt out on day one. We're going to keep free choice salt in front of them, either in block form or loose, all the time. But on our sweet pro, what we're going to do is we're going to just place the next tub on day 10. So if say they run out on day six or day seven, you just don't put another uh, tub out, block out until day 10. And that's the way you can fine tune what your, your animals are getting um, and what you want them to get. Uh, that's excellent for uh, budgeting and, and trying to, to figure that out as well. So the option that we've kind of been focused on and talked about most here this evening is our stage of growth um, blocks. That's where we're going to get our peak performance. Um, but we also have another option. Uh, we have our mineral EX tub, which is a lower consumption. You're looking at about uh, four ounces on that uh, or our loose Sweet Pro mineral EX loose uh, product uh, that are very uh, convenient and economical. So say if you've uh, got cattle up in the mountains and you can't get tubs up to them, uh, you can still stay on the Sweet Pro program, still get the probiotin, uh, as you can see over here in, in each of these. Um, um, or if you're uh, doing intensive grazing and moving cattle often and don't want the hassle of, of moving the tubs around, um, that's an option that you can use uh, the loose on, on there. I want to run through this uh, slide real quick because one of the questions that come up and a lot of ranchers will come into our, our, our store or visit with one of our dealers and say, I want a X amount of protein or 40% protein or it's, it's kind of all about protein. And um, the protein is hugely important. Don't, don't get me wrong on that. But I want to share with you Sweet Pro's approach to protein so that you have a, a little bit of an idea of why we're not as concerned about the number of protein uh, that's on the label. Um, and I'm gonna talk about that being usable versus available. So in the Sweet Pro tubs, as we've already talked about, uh, there's protein that comes along with it. And this one on the picture I've got here happens to be a fiber mate 20, uh, so 20% uh, protein. It's got room and degradable protein and room and undegradable protein. We talked a little bit about the value of that and we can go into that a little bit more in the Q&A if anybody wants to, to do that. But then beyond that, we've got this whole um, uh, amino acid profile from corn from your distiller's grains and wheat, oats, barley, and flax. And so it's like a stave bucket, uh, your protein. Uh, you can put as much protein in there as you want to, but wherever your limiting amino acid is, that's the total amount of protein that they're going to be able to get. The rest of it's just going to go right out the back and, and they're not going to be able to utilize that. So uh, as we look at this, um, we raise those staves all up because of the amino acid profile of the wheat, oats, uh, barley, flax, and corn. Also, it takes energy to correctly for that rumen to um, correctly uh, process and, and utilize protein. And it'll actually utilize protein for energy if it doesn't have energy, so you lack more protein. And so the energy that comes in there um, is supporting uh, the availability of, and usability of protein that's there. 
Then we've already talked about probiotin, our digestive aid, the microbes where we, it in, increases because of the pH levels and, and the uh, prebiotics like moss and fruto, uh, oligosaccharide, all, all of those different things, the prebiotics that feed the probiotics, get the right environment for them, and then they um, grow, multiply, and when they're spent, they're actually the, the best uh, form of protein that there is for cattle. And then finally, uh, improve your uh, protein value and other nutrient value by 25% out of the grasses that they're eating or forages that they're eating. And all of this is off of one pound of, of sweet pearl. So as I ra wrap up kind of the formal presentation here, um, down here on the bottom left, it shows the sweet pearl. There's no molasses, no urea, flax and moss are standard. Uh, coupled with the Redmond natural trace mineral, the unprocessed, uh, unrefined sea salt, 60 plus naturally occurring trace minerals. Here's a quote from uh, Clint, Clint Swanson from Shipwheel Cattle Company in Ch Chinook, Montana. Uh, he's been on our product now for probably, oh, probably around on 10 years or so. But what he says is having access to products, uh, that have all of these benefits is very exciting in today's world of agriculture. At this point, I'm very comfortable recommending the Sweet Pro and Redmond Salt combination. Sure has done a great job for us, and he does a great job uh, in the in the industry. He's one of the one of the um, industry leaders. And this comes out of Oklahoma State, their uh, beef cattle manual, and this is kind of their conclusion. Uh, on the nutrition side, it says for efficient beef cattle nutrition, cattlemen must meet the dietary needs of both the cow and rumen microorganisms. This requires a combination of scientific knowledge, creativity, and management skills. Um, feeding programs should maximize microbial protein production first. That's what we're all about, is that those microbes in the rumen get that digestive system as efficient and effective as possible. All of those other systems are going to fall into place and then meet the additional nutrient requirements over and above those not met by microbial fermentation uh, end products. So I am going to escape out of that. Um, I guess escape. Um, okay, so and then I'm gonna go in, so, um, Get your questions ready here. I'm going to just jump into our, our website here and just show you a, a few um, a few things just real quickly on our on our website that you can look into. And as this scrolls across here, uh, one of the big things is I know we've got a lot of interest right now in the garlic and our natural um, ex extracts, the garlic for insect repellent and also the um, stress blend, which is cloves, uh, cinnamon, and chili peppers for um, heat stress, but also excellent gut health and, and performance. So as that, uh, when that scrolls across, if you click on that, um, that link, it takes, us, takes you to an article that will go into that, this pioneering natural solutions to age old problems in a, uh, and talks about that has some good information and we can answer some questions perhaps in the Q&A if you want to go uh, deeper into that. Uh, back on the home page, um, this little video, it's uh, about a 20, maybe a 30 minute video, but this is um, Bob Thornburg, who's the creator of Sweet Pro, and Dr. Abe Schaefer, the Sweet Pro's nutritionist, and they kind of go into a little bit more depth of what Make Sweet Pro unique and, and different. Um, as you scroll down further on the home page, uh, you, you get our, our Facebook. Definitely stop by there and, and like us. It'll keep you up to up to date with what's going on with AgriBest and uh, with webinars. We have webinars on the third, uh, or, yeah, third Thursday of every month. Um, next month, actually, Dr. Abe Schaefer is going to be talking. Um, he's going to be focusing a little bit more on, on horse nutrition, but how uh, the, the mineral makeup, 
how the um, probiotin and how the garlic uh, affect that. And so it's going to be valuable for not only uh, those of you that are connected on the, in the equine industry, but uh, just in, in good overall gut health and, and uh, animal as well. Um, on the cattle page, uh, just some references here. Um, as you look down on that page, there's a section called Real Ranch Results. So as you, you can click on that, there's uh, here's a um, 900 head operation that uh, basically split their herd in half and ran half of their herd on a salt and range uh, grass program and the other half uh, stayed on sweet pro year round. And just the, what happened uh, economically on that. So this herd was actually all together, 900 head running on Sweet Pro and is costing about $120,000 for the supplement. And when this herd split, it was two different brothers. Uh, the one brother said, well, I can save myself a hundred or I can save myself $60,000 right away by not supplementing and making these girls earn themselves a living. Uh, the other brother continued on with the same program that they had been doing. Uh, interesting thing, conception rates. It's one of the things that we're really focused on is uh, dropped by about, uh, 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 what was that, 13%. And the other thing is weaning weights we talked about. The calves on Sweet Pro weaned off at 122 pounds heavier uh, than their counterparts. And at about 30 calves, um, that ended up being an additional uh, uh, $63,400, which totally paid for the supplement for the whole herd for the whole year. So not only did they um, uh, get benefit from the supplement, uh, they actually put money in their pocket uh, beyond that. Um, the other one that's there is a uh, Herzog Heifer Development Program. Uh, this is uh, uh, some heifers that we actually uh, help the local rancher uh, develop. And basically the program is just on Sweet Pro and Redmond all the way from off the calf um, with these heifers through the winter. And they just graze out on uh, Eastern Montana um, uh, dormant winter grass. There wasn't, there was no additional uh, supplementation, supplement of hay. Oh, um, just Sweet Pro uh, 16s and, and Redmond, all the way until they calve as three-year-olds. Um, had excellent results on natural breeding um, for the replacement heifers, 85% first cycle, 96% uh, uh, in 90 days. And then this is where it gets really exciting, the three-year-olds. Um, so the first calf heifers getting them rebred uh, was huge with conception rates are up in the high 90s and have been um, all the way since um, 2015. Uh, check my notes here. Okay, the for those of you who got this new product here, the Sweet Pro Loose product, you come over here on the uh, new products uh, side on the right hand hand side of the page. Um, here's where you can get the product comparisons. So have a, they're all kind of on one sheet and then each of the individual tags if you're interested in, in looking at that. Uh, just FYI here, uh, all of our, our uh, products fit the NHTC. Um, and if you need any of those documents, you can get those here. And for more information, excellent uh, information is here in this book, a uh, little booklet. You can click on that to download. Uh, on Sweet Pro or this one uh, for Redmond. Um, got some feed calculators. Um, just shows you some net day co cost savings. Uh, if you put some numbers to that, uh, right now with our summer feeding options, our premium uh, can go through and it takes and it looks like you know, what you're currently doing, uh, if you put Sweet Pro out um, with your target consumption, Redmond on the side, what your day cost would be, 
we're seeing that we can improve uh, average daily gain on yearlings or um, calves on on the cow on the cows uh, somewhere around that four uh, tenths of a pound. And so you can play around with these numbers. This example that just comes up, um, you know, at a buck fifty calves, uh, you're going to have additional profit about thirty four dollars a head. Um, you know, so if you put that, at, you know, a dollar thirty, you're about twenty two. Um, Twenty-two dollars a head um, profit, additional profit uh, after paying. That includes paying for all of your supplements for your herd throughout the summer. So, whew, lots of stuff there. Sorry, guys. Let's uh, jump into some question and and answers. Um, see, I'll turn that over to, to you, Daryl. What do you? I guess I haven't been watching chats or quest Q and A's. What what types of things do we? Uh, have this evening? Um, yeah, we just had some questions about running cows and sheep together. Um, what options with the Sweet Pro? We do have, uh, Sweet Pro does have sheep tubs, uh, no added copper, so uh, th that would be a good option um, for both cows and sheep uh, running together. Okay, excellent. And sheep are going to be fairly similar as far as um, uh, some of the performance. The rumen works very similar, and and um, yeah, uh, you can go ahead and if you want to ask a question, you can uh, raise your hand as well, um, and we'll take take questions. Um, one thing, uh, Scott, uh, on the garlic uh, um, and uh, the stress blend, the extracts, those are available in both the Redmond products and the Sweet Pro products. Um, so just so you know that those options um, are, are good and in, in, are available in both of those product lines, then uh, the, the garlic is, is just working fantastic on, on pest control. Yeah, so we've got um, basically just some rough numbers on that. Uh, that that natural, um, the natural extracts we've just been thoroughly impressed with. We've been working with them for about three years now. The first year was kind of a little bit of a testing year, and then really rolled it out last year. And now we're into our third year, and I have had incredible results. But um, one of the things that we're seeing is that the the cost on it, one is natural, and so that's a, a, a big winner. Um, it's a, a feed through, um, but it's actually repelling all biting insects, so, so there's value in that. Um, but the cost of it is, is actually cheaper than uh, like IGR products and things like that. So uh, we're looking somewhere in that around two to three cents a day depending on consumption on Redmond. You're about three cents a day at a pound um, on Sweet Pro. Uh, the stress blend like say is excellent for heat stress. Um, if you're in an area where it's um, 70, was it 75 degrees uh, or more consistently there, especially with black hided cattle, um, that uh, heat stress as cattle stop eating um, kind of bunch up and then you got uh, a number of problems that kind of come along with that and and um, this stress blend really helps out keeps them keeps them grazing keeps them drinking um, uh, so we've, we've had some really good res results with that as well other questions or if you want to raise your hand we'll um, Unmute you so you can ask your question. Should be some questions. Either I bored everybody to tears, or um, we do have uh, we do have a question on the horse side, um, and the question is, uh, what does the garlic do to prevent uh, fly production? Um, it doesn't actually um, interrupt the, the fly's life cycle. It doesn't kill the larvae. 
Um, I would say, and we've heard from ranchers that the um, it does seem like the um, the fly count goes down as the as the season goes on. Uh, if the the flies do not have a food source, uh, the blood um, they will um, they will end up dying. So it, it the garlic doesn't kill; it just repels um, and uh, and very effective at that. The ticks, uh, mosquitoes on horses, very important too with West Nile, um, but uh, it does not prevent uh, fly production. Uh, one of the good things is, is, is uh, you know, there's been some uh, speculation whether IGR products uh, um, affect dung beetles. Um, this being an all natural product, uh, it's not gonna affect dung beetles, so it keeps those uh, good bugs that uh, turn that manure into usable um, nutrients for the soil. Um, uh, so once again, very good product, uh, all natural, that's just gonna keep everything healthy. Um, another question, how long should livestock be on the garlic before it can effectively repel insects? Um, two weeks, um, some people are saying 10 days uh, out in the field. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it's a pretty, pretty fast turnaround as long as the consumption on the product that has the garlic in it is high enough. Um, it is pretty quick. Uh, one of the things that, that is good about the garlic is it's very uh, forgiving compared to um, an IGR product. An IGR product, you really need to hit it early. Uh, you need to be consistent all the way through the, the, the fly season. Um, the garlic, uh, you, you can start a little bit later, and once it's in the bloodstream, it's gonna repel those, those biting insects. Uh, every once in a while you run out, you don't realize you're out or whatever, you can jump back in, and, and in 10 days, two weeks, you're gonna, you're gonna be repelling those, those insects again. So another thing as we talk about that, uh, with our space space feeding uh, concept that I talked about on the sleep probe, being able to keep that consumption right where you where you want it, um, we feel that we don't want to have more than a five day uh, window without sleep probe. And kind of the reason that is is that we're feeding the microbes in the rumen, and we feel like we'll lose a little bit of digestive efficiency there. We wouldn't lose the nutritional value that would come in from the protein and the minerals but we would lose some of that uh, digestive efficiency with, with the bugs on, on their life cycle in the, in the room. Now, when we look at uh, your um, insect repellent with garlic, that's something you would, you know, we really don't know that all that well, but we, we would probably recommend that uh, either you don't use a space feeding or you're only off a day or two with that or using the, the garlic coming through with the red one. Well, anything else? Any questions on the website or where to find anything? Um, I guess hopefully this has been, been helpful. Uh, it's been a great webinar. We've, we've got people from all over North America, we can say, on, on this one. I appreciate everybody jumping on. Um, if there's any, I guess, any other questions you see there, Daryl? Um, on uh, the pricing, as the question was, is there pricing on the website? Um, you'll just need to contact us. Um, because it, uh, the price is different for different areas uh, because of distribution costs. Um, so uh, we would have to know exactly where you're at and we could get you pricings for that. Um, another question is, uh, how does the sweet pro hold up in weather? Um, obviously wet weather, uh, it holds up good. There's enough fat in it that it uh, repels water. Obviously if it's sat in water, it would start to um, decompose some uh, one of the really good things is where it's not manufactured, it's not held together with uh, molasses, uh, it does not get soft and soupy um, when it's really hot out. It, it maintains its integrity during that time. 
Um, so, uh, um, yeah, but otherwise, uh, the, the natural shape of the sweet pro tub as the cows are, are uh, licking on it um, uh, will automatically shed, um, shed the water, so that's not going to be a problem. On the horse products that, that are come in a tub, um, you will need to dump uh, the water out, obviously, uh, so it's not setting in there. Um, but uh, um, uh, the, the cattle tubs or the horse 250 pound tubs naturally will shed that water. Um, jump up to that uh, home screen there, just so you have a picture. Okay, you can do that. That cardboard wrap is just uh, used to um, uh, form the tub and to put a label on. Uh, it does not actually hold the tub together. It's more of a block. Um, so, I mean, you could, in all theory, just cut the cardboard off when you put it out. Um, or it just uh, disintegrates as the cows are licking on it. That's totally biodegradable. The only thing that uh, is this little plastic tray, kind of, there's six patents actually on this uh, product from my understanding, three on how it's put together and then three on the packaging. But as you can see, there's a forklift slot here. So four of them together make a um, half a ton and eight, four stacked on top, make another half time, ton or, or a full ton with a place for a forklift to slide. But if you're needing to be um, going out into places that are totally, um, um, that you've got to have everything biodegradable, you can actually even pop that tray off, turn it upside down, pop that off and, and uh, you're good there. This is where Daryl was saying on the horse product, this is a 50 pounder here, the 125 of course is a little bit bigger but where water could sit in there, um, you know, animals could either drink that off um, or dump it out and, and there's a very little problem with that. On Redmond, uh, um, moisture, uh, I mean, it's uh, cattle licking on it and, and moisture, it does, um, um, part of the benefit of it is that it uh, is very easy to get off and licking off and things. I mean, the press blocks stand up um, all right, but if you get a lot of moisture, it's gonna, um, it's gonna fall apart. So let's see, Eric, uh, let's see. I've got you unmuted, this, uh, Eric Thornburg from up in North Dakota, actually uh, Bob Thornburg's son. So go ahead, uh, and he works up in Canada. Hi, so this, this is actually Eric's fiance, not the voice of the world. Okay, well, you, you sound, a whole lot um, better than, sound a whole lot better than Eric, so go ahead. <laughs> so, um, just wondering on newborn calves, if you can put the tab out right away, or if you have to wait for them to be a certain age or weight before you can put it out to the calves. Okay, um, excellent question. Uh, the question, um, and Kind of working on the uh, kind of the way we recommend is that on cow calf operations, whether you're at calving or or through the summer or whatever, that you're feeding to the cow. But yeah, the the, the tubs are totally safe for the calves um, right off the bat. Um, and so even as we're looking at, uh, let's see, there we go. Um, so there's some options that you can use. Um, so if you're looking at, um, you know, calving, you're probably going to have the cows, uh, at that point, either like probably on the Sweet Pro or Fiber Mate 20 or Sweet Pro 16 if they're heifers. Um, but the calves will be up and, uh, vigorous right away. And a lot of times they'll start licking on that tub, even the harder tubs, uh, very quickly after they're born. But they're going to be getting value from Sweet Pro through the cow's milk. We're going to um, increase, have better milk production, better quality of milk. And uh, so you're kind of focused on the factory there. That's going to help them actually clean faster and get ready to be, get rebred and, and um, 
uh, fetal programming once they're they are rebred all of that but the, the calves then will also get additional value from licking on the tongue so excellent question and and you can do that right away when we look over towards the weaning side um, we would recommend having uh, feeding to the cow right up to weaning and you can actually uh, cut your weaning stress maybe in in half that was one of the things that uh, Clint Swanson had talked about is the value how he used that and basically eliminated a lot of the sickness at weaning and uh, feed through the cow with the calf and figure about a pound and a half that the calf will be getting about a half a pound consumption at that point and then you would wean onto a softer tub uh, the calves know what the tub's there they know they're supposed to eat and so they just actually continue to grow right through wean. Uh, Scott, there was a question earlier on whether uh, space feeding uh, applies the same to horses. Yes, um, there's there's some similarities to it, but it's it's difficult unless you have a huge herd of horses. Um, and that would be a, I guess, a good question. We have a horse specialist, uh, Rod Cordy, that. Um, if you want to reach out to us, we can get you connected with him and he can uh, better answer that, that question um, uh, as, far as, as far as that goes. But the, the big challenge on that is, you know, normally you're, you know, on a horse, horse herd, it's, it, you're not, you know, hundreds of, of head of animals, so you're, uh, uh, you can have that flexibility, but it's it's not as you know, I don't know what the right word is for for horses, not as, as efficient or doesn't make as big a deal as that does on the on the cattle side. Um, Equilix does also have some different options of hardness for the um, uh, Equilix tubs. Uh, there's the um, regular standard Equilix products. Then there's the Equilix PI, which stands for performance intake. Uh, it's designed for higher intake. It's going to be a little more palatable, a little bit softer. If you've got hard keepers, you're working them really hard. Uh, they come in pink tubs, so easy to identify. Um, and if you've got overconsumption, uh, Sweet Pro also makes an Equilix Max, and it's a little less palatable, a little bit harder to help control that consumption in overconsumption uh, areas where you would like to slow them down. So. Uh, those are there are three different types of tubs available on the on the Equilix. So there's a very similar foundation nutritionally and and the approach, um, but in the Equilix, it, it's on that same foundation that I talked about there with the vitamin and trace minerals, the the distiller strains and the value of that and the probiotin. Uh, they're just um, extra flax factors and ramped up probiotin and uh, vitamin E is also ramped up in diatomaceous surf in the in the Equilix, and and so um, it just really focuses in on that horse's digestive system and um, kind of maximizes health and performance uh, as far as that goes as well. Well, we're kind of at the end of the hour here. Any final questions, or was there anything else, Daryl, that you saw? Um, Kara had just mentioned that they put uh, calf starter out with their bottle calves to get them started um, before they start picking that grain, which is a really good idea because you're getting all of those digestive microbes into their system before you're adding those sugars and starches. You're getting, you're pulling up on that pH level, so you're not going to, um, you're going to decrease the risks of running into some, uh, into some health issues, scour problems and stuff like that. Uh, one question. Uh, that does come up frequently is what if my horses get out and get in with my cows? Um, the Sweet Pro tubs are, uh, are safe for horses. Sweet Pro does not use urea in any of their products. Um, and so uh, if your horses get in with your cows, uh, you're going to be okay. So that's another wonderful aspect of the Sweet Pro products is that uh, you're not going to tip your horses over if they get in with the cows. 
All right. Well, I appreciate everybody's uh, communication and um, uh, interaction here this evening. Uh, if you have any further questions, um, you can go to our website, agribestfeeds.com, hit the contact us. Uh, that email actually goes directly to my email, so I can uh, handle that. Um, we do have a get an estimate. Uh, for those of you who are kind of in our territory, we can get that uh, taken care of. Um, that goes right to Daryl. Daryl's our distribution manager, and he can get price quotes out on, on uh, any of those programs. Uh, we also have dealers that are spread out throughout our area that you can find on the, on the website um, or contact us, uh, and we can get you lined out on that. So. Thanks everyone. Um, hope you have a great Memorial Day weekend and enjoy the kickoff of, of summer. Uh, we appreciate you taking your time this evening to, to spend it with us and, and hopefully this uh, added some value and helps you understand uh, our feeding uh, approach a little bit better and how we can help hopefully enhance the lives of, of the producers that, that we um, uh, get to have some impact on. So have a great evening and uh, we'll see you on uh, June, whatever that would be, 18th for our next webinar.